Welcome back to the Hollywood News Channel, where we update you with the latest news of the day. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. In today's news, near the beginning of where my royal con, the new documentary about the lawyer and power broker who mentored Donald Trump, an interviewee says, Roy Corn's contempt for people, his contempt for the law was so evident on his face that if you were in presence, you knew you were in the, pres- in the presence of evil. He wasn't being hyperbolic. The, f- the, f- the film, which opens in New York and Los Angeles on Friday, will likely be the wide interest because of how Corn helps explain Trump. In the attorney's life, you can see the strange ease with which a cybernetic con man fit in the crusading social reactionaries. You see the glee con derived from being an exception to the rules he enforced on weaker people. From him, Trump learned how, when he was in trouble, to change the subject by acting outrageously he to never apologize and always stay on the offense. When the Justice Department claimed that apartment buildings owned by the Trump family were discriminating against black renters, it was Corn's idea to countersue the Justice Department for $100 million. In the 1950s, a chief counsel of Senator Joseph McCarthy, Corn was just a key player in the anti-communist which Hunts of the time. He was persecuted men. He also persecuted men in the State Department who were suspected of being gay, despite being a closeted gay man himself. Later, he became a consigliere to New York's mafia families, some of whom also had ties to Trump, even as he ranted about law and order. The film's title comes from something Trump said when he was frustrated with then Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Corn and Corn was Trump's template for what a lawyer is supposed to be. In Attorney General Bill Barr, he seems, he seems to have found someone who satisfies him. Roy was somebody that had no boundaries, a lawyer in his firm says in the film. And if you were on the right side of him, it was great. And if you were on the wrong side of him, it was terrible. But what if I found most striking about where's my Roy Corn? Wasn't it inside into the thuggish president whose particular brand of Male violence, mal- malay violence has been theorized to death. It was a reminder of just how decadent, in every sense, New York society used to be. Corn was manifestly despicable, but he was embraced rather than shunned by New York elites. Elites. For a time, he had a sham engagement to Barbara Walters. He hung out, he hung out with the famed artist Andy Warhol and was a regular at the oft mythologized nightclub studio 54. Warhol is, Warhol is also briefly mentioned in the film, but his diaries mention Korn's parties repeatedly. And when you go to these Roy Korn things, all everybody says is, it's so amusing, it's so interesting, because you never know who you'll find at these things. Warhol wrote in 1982. In 1985, he described Korn's birthday party at the New York nightclub, the Palladium, TV monitors showed Korn's anti-communist speeches from the 1950s, and that was exciting. It was the best thing, wrote Warhol. To understand the, the milieu, Korn moved in his, I think to understand at least some of the generation gap among elites over what sometimes called cancel culture or a call-out culture or even just political correctness, if you are under 35 or 40, it's probably hard to grasp just how, dis, how de, depravity used to be tolerated in fancy circles and further how tolerating it was itself taken as a sign of sophistication during Warhol's heyday, the immoral celebration of fame, was considered glamorous and edgy and genuine outrage of deeply uncool. Similar values still p- uh, p- predominated when I moved to New York almost 20 years ago, when figures like Harvey Weinstein seemed to rule the city. It was until they intertwined a sense of social media and millennial progressives that the zeitgeist really turned and jaded acceptance of the status quo fell from fashion. Younger people scarred by the wreckage of financial crisis looked at the world they de-inherited and felt wide-ranging moral indignation. Unlike their elders, they hadn't watched the radical promise of the late 60s curdle into violence and farce and so were disillusionized with the left. Today, wealth and power can still buy horrible people a degree of social acceptance. Sean Spicer lied to the American people for a living and it is now on Dancing with the Stars. Ivanka Trump, Ivanka Trump is still reportedly invited to celebrity weddings. But the left has far more cultural power than in the past and some on the left have used that power to remoralize the public square. Sometimes that means 
ostracizing people or as they say on the internet, cancelling them. A more decent society would have done that to Korn. Still, it is easy to see why the way the left deploys its influence feels to some inquisitorial. The religious right of how hates the new cultural mores because it wants to, re to remoralize America on its terms, but plenty of its liberals are nostalgic for a less sanctimonious era, where at least in certain cosmopolitan precincts, most amusing and interesting were more important than being upright. Sometimes I feel this nostalgia myself. If you came from aid in a culture that celebrated transgression, norms that demand sensitivity can feel restrictive. But to see the ways Korn was accepting among artists, socialized and the, domino, and the de demimond of New York's nightlife is to be reminded how warped the city's values used to be. That's why for so long, Trump was able to thrive here. In the end, the social world in which Korn could be at, ra at once a right-wing dirty trickster and a celebrity-born vervent did have rules, and he ran afoul of them. In 1986, after a lifetime of skirting consequences for his corruption, Korn was despaired from his che for cheating his clients. At one point, Korn allegedly dressed up like a male nurse to get a dying multi-millionaire client to sign a document making him a trustee of his estate. Unable to practice law, his power in Evanest in Where's My Roy Corn? An old friend explains how. Every year, Korn held a private dinner for his intimates. After this barment, the friend arrived at one such dinner where I get there. This long table was set and nobody came, he said. At the same time, Korn was dying of AIDS, though he refused to admit it. Trump, his prestige, cut him off. New York wasn't more forgiving back then. It was just more forgiving of certain people. That is it for today's news, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Thank you for watching the Hollywood News. Don't forget to like and share the updates to the latest information of the day.